Hello everybody, welcome to our editorial session. The topic that we will be discussing today is that is uniform civil code in context of Uttarakhand. Now what we need to understand here is that uniform civil code is as such not a new issue. This has been an issue of long debate with respect to our country. If we discuss this, we can take a historical context with respect to uniform civil court. What do I mean by uni uh, historical context is that is the debate that was done by constituent assembly while formulating the constitution of our country. It was a hot topic then. Then with respect to some of the religious issues that have cropped up uh, in, a, in our country, then also basically uniform civil code was a very hot debatable topic. Now also basically we see that many states have tried to formulate uniform civil code. So first of all we need to understand is what is uniform civil code basically why it is such a debatable issue. The definition as such has been provided by the article itself. See, with respect to our country, specifically with respect to religious issues. You need to know that basically that all the religious matters are not governed through a uniform pattern, specifically in the context of minorities. Different set of laws are prevalent with respect to their religious issues, what we also sometimes call as, they are called as personal laws. In this context, basically, the religious minorities or different religious basically organizations have the right to govern the matters coming within that context of religion according to their own parameters, according to their own traditions, according to their own customs. Now, what does Uniform Civil Code try to do here is, Uniform Civil Code tries to create a uniform set of laws. It means that, for example, there are 100 individuals living within a country. Now, they may be divided on the context that 40 belongs to one religious community, for example, A, 30 belongs to another religious community, B, and 20 belongs to another religious community that is called as C. Now, these basically religious organizations govern the religious rights or practices of these individuals living within the country according to their own traditions, according to their own customs. Now, what will Uniform Civil Code do here is, Uniform Civil Code will dilute the distinction what do I mean by dilute the distinction that whatever basically their religious organization state that they will govern their religious what we say rights, traditions, customs according to their own basis that will be eliminated by uniform civil code. It means that basically all the matters with respect to all the basically individuals living, the con living within the country will be governed on the uniform pattern. In simplistic terms we can state that basically all the members living within the basically territory of the country will be bound by the same set of laws. As such, there will be no distinction with respect to the criteria with respect to different religious minority minorities. For example, if we take a very nice example here, that is of marriage. For example, the marriage codes with respect to Hindus and Muslims are different because basically the Muslims have their own customs and traditions with respect to the what we say uh, family traditions or marriage traditions. In this context, they are governed by their own what we call as personal laws, whereas basically the marriage or the traditional what we say family sets for the Hindus are different. So in this context, basically this distinction will be removed for both the communities. You will have a very, you must have remembered a very prominent example in this context that is called as triple talaq case. Another example that can be taken here is with respect to inheritance. Inheritance rights basically for Muslim women are different, for Hindu women are different. Similarly, marriage rights with respect to basically Hindu women are different and Muslim women are different. This distinction will be diluted by the or eliminated by the uniform civil code. So, what does it try to state here is, it states that uniform civil code creates a uniform set of laws to replace the distinct personal laws of every religion pertaining to what is its subject matter, basically where this distinction will be removed. It is with respect to marriage, it is with respect to divorce, adoption and inheritance. 
Now, second thing we need to understand is this can also be asked with respect to your prelims examination where in the constitution do you find the mention of basically article 44 or uniform civil code. So, that is with respect to your DPSPs directive principles of state policy basically it creates a direction for the state to implement the uniform civil code basically in the future. Now, when this particular provision was introduced in the DPSPs, we need to understand that it was a matter of debate because there was some opponents with respect to uniform civil code then there were some also prominent promi uh, what we say proponents for the uniform civil code. So, what did the opponents try to say here opponents stated that this particular uniform civil code it will dilute what is called as right to religious freedom. Now, it is a part of your fundamental rights under article 25. Why it will dilute the religious freedom because it will create a uniform set of practices for all the individuals and it may lead to delusion of some specific traditions or rituals or customs that are followed by a particular community. Whereas basically the proponents of the uniform civil code they stated that basically it is as such it is not a matter of religious freedom specifically they stated that it is essential that you promote equality for women because we state that basically if we even take an example of what we say that is called as triple talaq case or inheritance case or basically divorce case it is generally the woman who is at the receiving end who is being discriminated and to dilute this discrimination to promote equality within the society or to per basically remove the social evils that are prevalent within the various religions it is essential that uniform civil code should be followed or should be basically adhered by the what we say constitution in this context it is important to note the views of dr ambedkar what does dr ambedkar states that basically he stated that See, uniform civil code is very essential for our country. It is a very desirable phenomenon if you want to promote equality. But considering the situation of our country, basically considering the religious diversity of our country, he stated that it should remain voluntary. It should not be imposed upon the different religious communities that are present within the country. It should be voluntarily adopted by the individuals and then only it should be enforced by the states. Now, in this context, what we need to understand is what we need to understand the present context the what is the present context here is case of Uttarakhand they have basically what they have constituted a committee basically by the former Supreme Court Justice basically Ranjana Prakash Desai for the implementation of the CI uh, UCC sorry that whether it should be implemented or whether it should not be implemented. So, what does it particularly state that it states that basically proposal has been met with some opposition stating that it is a political gimmick basically it should it has been done for vote bank politics whereas basically the those who in favor of this uniform civil code it, they state that it is essential for equality to remove discrimination for it is essential for women empowerment within our society as such it is not a basic case of vote bank politics earlier basically we also need to understand what are the views of supreme court in this regard because on various occasions the cases with respect to what we say uniform civil code implementation have gone to the supreme court and it has given its own view if we take the most famous case with respect to this that is called as Shah Banu Begum case again can be asked with respect to your prelims examination what are the various cases that are linked with the uniform civil code again the judgment stated that basically it is a matter of regret that article 44 has remained a dead letter basically and stated that it should be implemented in the near future again basically no as such step was taken by the central government in this context again with respect to this a case was heard by Supreme Court of India that is Sara Mudgal case and then basically Johan versus Union of India case in 2003. 
reviving the push for basically ucc again in 2022 to 23 if we say that basically the article states that six petitions were filed in the supreme court with respect to ucc again what was the basic criteria or what in what context these petitions were filed it was for uniformity in divorce maintenance alimony laws on the ground that they are discriminatory against women and if they are discriminatory obviously they violate the right to equality and what are those articles specifically article 14 and article 15 of the constitution various individual political individuals civil society organizations basically have went to the supreme court in this context but however supreme court basically has stated that we cannot state anything specifically giving the argument that is given by your chief justice of india dy chandra chud he stated that these petitions basically the issue falls within the exclusive domain of the parliament it is parliament that has to make the law on the uniform civil code as such judiciary cannot basically formulate a law with respect to uniform civil co code or can state that it should be implemented from tomorrow because otherwise it will be a case of judicial activism or even can be called as a case of judicial overreach again in this context basically earlier the petition was dismissed by the court highlighting article 162 again this article is important basically can be asked with respect to your prelim examination what does the article state article state that basically that the executive power of the state extends to matter with respect to which the legislature of the state has the power to make laws it essentially means that state can make all laws on only those matters that are within the jurisdiction of the state or basically where there is a jurisdiction or basically what you can in simplistic terms you can state that you have schedule 7 that talks about three lists one is union list then you have state list and last you have concurrent list the state can make laws only on the matters that are listed within the state list basically and th under this article the petition was dismissed by the supreme court Again, basically, the government went for law commission. Government constituted a law commission and asked what are its views basically with respect to uniform civil code, whether it should be implemented or what should be the criteria that should be followed. It was basically under former Supreme Court Justice, that is Justice Balbir Singh Chauhan. Again, basically giving its recommendations, the Law Commission report stated that uniform civil code is neither necessary nor desirable at this particular stage. In 2018, the report was given by the Law Commission. What does this mean that basically it is neither necessary nor desirable at this particular stage? It means that basically, again from where we started our debate, it should be voluntary mechanism. And second thing, if you want to implement this particular code a consensus should be developed with respect to this particular uniform civil code because why it further stated that this thing can be quoted with respect to your essays also with respect to your mains examinations conclusions also gs paper also very beautiful line that was stated here the report stated that uniform unified nation does not necessarily need uniformity very crucial point in context of what is called as diversity of India. It essentially means that if you want to make a nation, if you want to basically forge close ties basically among the peoples of the nation, it is not essential that they should be uniform in each and every aspect or rather diversity should be celebrated. Again, basically it stated that discriminatory, however, a very important line was also stated here at the end that discriminatory practices and stereotypes within the personal laws should be amended you should understand this basically that india follows what is called as positive conception of secularism as such there is not a rigid distinction between religion and state whenever state sees that basically there is a need for constructive intervention within the matters of religion or rights are being violated or some social reforms are being needed state can intervene in the 
religious matters. So it stated that basically if you feel that that there are some personal laws that are discriminatory against the women section of society, they promote discrimination, they do not promote equality. So what can state do is basically state can reform the existing personal laws. What do you mean by that state should basically reform the existing personal laws that they should be in sync within the values that are promoted by the constitution so that is basically a very beautiful basically conclusion type report that you that can be stated anywhere that it is neither desirable basically and basically neither necessary at this particular stage then second thing uniformity or unified nation does not need uniformity then the third thing basically the state should go for reformation in the personal laws that are uh, that is therefore with respect to particular religious community then again basically what happens next it states that basically it depends upon the center that whether it is likely to propose a UCC at the pan level, it is debatable whether basically a central government will formulate uniform uh, uniform civil code or it will be the state specific state governments that will try to bring some rules or regulations with respect to this particular code. And at the last basically again the court of the Supreme Court was highlighted that scope and ambit of the right to freedom of religion under article 25 of the constitution basically it reignites the debate upon that because I have as I have already stated even in constituent assembly this was a matter of debate whether if we will follow or if we will implement the uniform civil code whether it will basically violate the right to religion or basically right to freedom of religion specifically in context of religious minorities because it may dilute some essential practices or codes that are basically pursued by the different religious community or basically another view is that the proponents for uniform civil code state that it is not a matter of freedom of religion but a matter of equality removing discrimination and women empowerment so what happens next need to be seen but this particular topic is very much essential with respect to your prelim examination as i've already stated you need to know the judgments as well as basically where specifically uniform civil code finds the mention in the constitution of india and second thing obviously with respect to your means examination whether you should implement that means arguments in favor or arguments against whether you should not implement the uniform civil code in the context of India. So we will discuss this topic at length in your current affair class. So this is all from my side.